speak on love and broken things. Yes. And my, sub my subtopic is why real love doesn't work in broken things. Real love. I don't care what you heard. I don't care what sermon you preached. I don't care, or you heard somebody preach, or you heard in the Bible say, real love doesn't work in broken things. It don't. I had a glass of water, and it had a big crack in it, and I wanted to drink this of water. Could I get the amount of water I, I want because it's, it's inside of broken things? Well, the Bible, the, the Word of God said, God loves broken things. He said, bring the broken things to me. Come on now. But when you bring these broken things to God, they don't stay broken long. Why? Because love can't work in a broken thing. My subtopic again is love and broken things. I'm going to let y'all in on something I learned. I'm learning, I'm assuming that y'all don't know. I was looking at the, I was looking in Genesis. I looked in Genesis. One, I looked in Genesis, what if I know one? I looked in Genesis two. I looked in Genesis three. I looked in Genesis four. I went all the way up, where are you talk about Noah? And then I went a little bit further where it talked about you know, the flood and the Tower of Babel. I'm serious. I, I went to, but I knew God wanted me to preach on love. And you know what I learned? Nowhere. And if you can show it, show it to me now. I would love more than anything to be schooled. I did not see the word love in Genesis 1, in Genesis 2. In Genesis 3, all the way even in the flood, even when I talk about the Tower of Babel, I'm like, what? Nobody says in these scriptures, even when it's appropriate, I love you. Serious. The closest I came to that in Genesis. Oh, it's outside. The closest I came to that was when God created Adam and had Adam the name, all the things. And even when God created the earth, he said, and he created life, and it was good. It didn't even say he liked it or he loved it. It was great. God just loved it. No. He said good. He said good. When he created Adam, and had Adam to name all the animals. So he couldn't name no more animals. God had an epiphany. He said, you know what? It's not good for man to be alone. Which is true. Very true. And he created Eve. And he created this female. And Adam was so pleased. He said everything but what? I love her. He didn't say it. You would think he would. You'd think he'd be so overwhelmed. But instead, what he said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. You know what? I'm going to call you woman because you were taken out of my. Look like he, the word I love you. You knew Abraham and Sarah was close. They were close. But you never heard Abraham say, I love her. You never heard, instead of Sarah saying, I love you. When she got so overwhelmed with emotions for her husband, every now and then said she would call him Lord. Mm -hmm. I love you. And when they got overwhelmed with emotions, you, I, I'm like, why am I not hearing? I love you. Oh, I, you know, 
when it really got intimate, it played down those passionate moments with, and he laid with her. And they laid with, you know. And I'm like, wait a minute. For God of love started to write a book. And you would think this book, this book is about him. But I'm like, why are you seeing? I ain't seeing love. I don't understand. I love you. Even with Adam and Eve, them kicked out of the garden to eat together. And God blessed her to have her first baby. Even in that, you didn't hear love. You didn't hear the own God in Jesus when they started to give that thing a name. When they started to name things. Then you kind of sort of, in a way, kind of pick it up. Like in Genesis 29. If you go to Genesis 29. And I did, I really, I, first I thought it wasn't in the Old Testament. I was going to say, you mean to tell me they didn't mention nothing about love in the Old Testament. When it really says that love is mentioned 320 times in the Bible itself. But if you go to the Genesis uh, 29, and uh -uh, I'm going to go to Genesis 29. This is when um, Jacob met Rachel, the one who was assumed to be his wife. And it says, I'm going to start at 10. And it came to pass that when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother, the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the whale's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob, look out! Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Jacob kissed Rachel uh -huh. and lifted up his voice and wept. He was so moved and so overwhelmed. He was already feeling it. He was already feeling it. He couldn't resist himself. He leaned over and he just, he just kissed her. And then it gave her the name in 18. It says, and Jacob, wait a minute, I'm going to go to uh, 16. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, tender but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored, and Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. Uh -huh. That's when I heard that word love. And I had to ask God. And he answered my question. I'm like, God, why is it love mentioned in Genesis, in the beginning of Genesis? And what God said to me just absolutely overwhelmed me. He said, just the, the word love itself was not mentioned, but the action was all in it. The action was all in it. See, back in the Old Testament, you didn't just say love. You showed it. You showed it. And people recognize love by what you show them. You had to show them. It was outwardly. You had to put it in action. And another thing God told me. He said, if I never mentioned love, so what? He said, I am love. I ain't got to go to school to learn how to be black. What college courses do we have to take? What college courses do we have to take to learn how to be African American? What, what, what in high school do we have to take? Now y'all got the color now, but y'all just got to learn how to act. No, nobody taught me how to be black. It came natural. Yes. It naturally came. Uh-huh. I didn't have to work for it. I didn't have to earn it. I didn't have to practice. It came natural. God don't have to love. Why? Because he is love. It just comes natural. And it came from him first. Amen. None of us could love nobody, nothing. 
authenticity as to who God is. And God said, well, I'm going to tell you what I'm not. I'm going to tell you what, what, what I approve of. I'm going to tell you what I'm against. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not bear false witness. He knew people were going to break those rules, but he was letting the people know who he was. You want to know who I am? This is me. This is my character. And if you want to get to know me, you need to start learning how to do this. You're going to fail, yeah. You're not always going to get it right. But you got to keep trying. You got to be practitioners of righteousness. See, as long as you keep trying to be right, you're a practitioner. But when you stop, you ain't no practitioner. You're just a straight up, jacked up sinner. Just want to live your way and don't want to have nothing to do with God or his love. God ain't, God ain't got to love you. It just comes natural. Like breathing. Do we always have to remind ourselves to breathe? We don't be thinking about breathing. But it just comes. We don't say, all right, heart. Time to start pumping. On, no, God. it Come just on. comes natural. Uh -huh. The same with God's love. It comes natural. He fell in love with us a long time ago. He fell in love with us years before we even knew what an existence was. He fell in love so much that he made a declaration. She said, you know what? In the Bible, he said, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. He said, I'm going to create a heaven and I'm going to create an earth. But you got to admit, Adam and Eve didn't start off being broken. Because see, back to my, my, my point, real love doesn't work in broken things. Adam and Eve didn't come out broken. That's right. They That's came right. out just that, like that little baby. When that baby came out, that baby was brand new. That's right. Skin so soft like tissue. You scared? I was almost scared to hold my baby. I was scared to hold Adam. Adam was premature. I, my husband dealt with him more than me because I was so scared and I was so in F that being a mother, I thought I'd screw motherhood up. And he was so tender and so gentle. It just seemed like if I sneezed on him, I'd break his arm. So I was very iffy about my own baby. And the nurses would encourage me, you need to hold him more. I'm kind of small here. You need to hold him more. You his mama. He need to get to know you. Yeah, I understand that. But he looks so delicate. Babies come out so new. Even they poop smell new. It don't smell like old boy. I don't want to smell like old boy person. But a newborn baby, oh, he pooped just so new. Even when he burped, he had that burp baby milk breath. You just want to just, oh, baby, you know, oh, I, you know, everything's new. Adam and Eve came out new. And because they came out new, it was easy for love to what? It was easy for love to what, y'all? To move and to flow in their lives. Do you know how love's supposed to be in our life? Take a short glass of water. Now imagine this, because I can't do a demonstration. Take a short glass of water, a big pitcher of water. Now the glass represents your vessel. That's you. You the glass. That's your body. The water inside the container is God's love. Now imagine that, y'all. Y'all imagine that container filled with ice cold, no ice cube, but ice cold, good cold water. And you take that picture and you get the pouring and then with the picture, get all the way to the top, you stop. But God love don't work like that. It keeps on pouring till the water overflows and it falls to the floor and it falls on the table. See, that's how God love is. It's so strong, it affects everybody around it. It drowns everybody. It, it overcomes anybody who gets any, anywhere near it. It's a very potent and powerful thing. Very potent. But we're talking about love, and we're talking about broken things. Broken things are unable to work. They're unable to move. Now, 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 Adam and Eve, they weren't broken. God love flowed in their lives. They didn't look at each other and see naked people. They looked at each other and see absolutely nothing but pure love. But when you get started getting tangled in stuff you shouldn't be tangled in, the minute that they bitter that fruit, Come on now. Come they on. became broken. 
Yes. And a separation was made. Uh -huh. And a separation took place. Right. And they started getting cracks in their vessels. And that's what happened to us. Every man want to come out brand new life, baby, so pure and honest. But you can get mixed up so much in this world, it will turn you hardcore. It will turn you ugly. I remember my own nieces and nephews. I practically helped babysit them when they didn't have nothing to do. I would take Sonequa and Maurice and, 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 and David and Kenny and my own two sick kids. And we go, we go, I think we went swimming one day. Then we went working at, at, uh, uh, at the food bank, and then I would take them to the park and let them, they were pure, they were easy to get along, but as they grew up and started getting entangled in the mess of this world, they started to get hardened and hardcore and grown, do you feel like, I don't know what to do, I, I know I gave birth to this, but this, I don't recognize this I gave birth to. That's when the coldness and the hard cores of life come into you and cause cracks. And when God try to make his love flow to you, it don't get that. A glass never fills. It's always, you always, you always need the water. But mind you, he told that woman at the well, he said, I give you water that will never run dry. Yeah. In Psalms, the first song he talked about that righteous man. Yeah. How God will make him like a tree. Yeah. Planted yeah. by the rivers of water. Right. Well, that tree will never, right. never go dry. Right. He right. talked about those blessings that will overflow oh. you and overtake you and run you down yeah. and smack you every which way. He talked about an overflow. But when you start that unforgiveness in your life, and things, when you start holding grudges and things that happened to you in the past, you start letting stuff stick to you. You start acting like the world wants you to act. Then you get cracks. Come on now. Come on, say it. You get cracks. Mm -hmm. And they hurt. Oh, yeah. You don't believe me, I'll have a crack in your teeth. Come on now. Come on. You be at, at 3 o'clock at night, you're dealing with a, a crack in your teeth. Come on. You be want to go and open up the, kidnap the dentist. Go open up the dentist house there. <laughs> Put a gun to but you're going to fix this. Uh -huh. You're going to fix on, this. Come on, ain't in these. I know what you're talking about. When you let unforgiveness sit in, yes, when you let God. hatred sit in, uh -huh. when you set all, oh, when you when you attach yourself to these things that don't belong you, yes. you create cracks, and it makes it hard for you to love. It makes it hard for you to love. It makes it hard for you to accept love. Come on now. Come it makes on. you hard to give love. That's right. It makes you hard to be loved. Come on, come That's on. True. That's true. Amen. But understand, love can't work in a broken thing. Adam and Eve were broken. They were broken. And God had a solution to their brokenness. He said, my son, he gonna come yes. and he gonna fix that brokenness. Yes. He gonna fix that crack. Mm -hmm. He's gonna fix that unforgiveness. He's gonna fix that lying tongue. Yes. He's gonna fix all that. Cause I'm gonna take all them cracks on you. And I'm going to put it on my son on the cross. Uh -huh. Everything that we ever went through, God said, I'll put it on my son on yes. the cross. Uh -huh. And when he put it on his son, uh -huh. now we got an opportunity. Uh -huh. We don't have to be crack pots. We don't have to live with all these cracks. We can walk up under the, the cross and let his blood flow down on us. And it cleanse every crack we got. Yes. Because I'm telling you, uh -huh. love don't flow through crack pots. Love don't flow through broken things. So God created, he made a way of an escape. He made us into a vessel. God's blood covers the vessel. It covers the cracks. It covers the brokenness. So that love can flow back again. And before you know it, you can pour water in that glass and keep on pouring it. And let it flow. And let it flow. And let it flow. Because the love can't flow through a broken Amen, amen, amen. I learned a long time ago about my life yes. well, and what I needed in my life. Come on now, come on. See, there was a time, Pastor, there was a time yes. I thought I needed clothes. Uh -huh. come on, That's when I was in high school. Yes. I said, if I just had clothes, just had hallelujah. Because uh -huh. I was a crackpot. Yes. I had cracks in me. And I didn't want everybody to see my cracks. Uh -huh. I didn't want everybody to see my perfection. So I prayed to God and said, God, if 
you just give me clothes, I'll be all right. But when I got those clothes, Pastor, I wasn't all right. Then I said, but God, if you give me friends to hang out with, I'll be all right. He gave me friends, but I wasn't all right. Then I said, God, if you give me popularity, I'll be all right. He gave me popularity, but I wasn't all right. But I said, I got taken advantage of, yeah. but it wasn't all right. Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! I said, God! Hallelujah! When I was at the end of my rope, coming out of another bad relationship, then I said, God, why you do this to me? Why you do this to me? Uh -huh. He said, Remember Adam? Adam tried to find a helpmate. Yeah. He went to the lion. Uh -huh. He said, As I get this lion, God, I'll be all right. Yeah. God let him name the lion, uh -huh. but he wasn't all right. He, right. he let him name as many animals uh -huh. as he can and try to get a relationship with every animal he can, uh -huh. but he wasn't all right. relationship uh -huh. is jacked up, messed up, couldn't trust myself. I thought, oh man, I start singing that same old song all women out there in the world singing. Man ain't no good. They just out to hurt you. They just want to do, no, they're the men I pick. Come on now, come on. Come on. When God came in my life, uh -huh. he said, Brenda, what do you want? And I knew he wouldn't give it to me. I don't know yeah. what I earned because he gave it to me. Uh -huh. He gave me the fine body, gave me the friend, gave me the popularity, gave me the money, gave me all that. But all those things failed. Come on now. So Come I said, Brenda, what do you want? Mm -hmm. What do you really want? Come on. And I had to be honest with the pastor. Uh -huh. I said, I want three things, God. Come three on, things man. I Come want. On. I want somebody to see me. Mm. Thank you, Lord. I have been in a crowd of people. Don't you know you've been in a crowd of people uh -huh. and be lonely? Yes, yes. You can be in a crowd of people mm -hmm. and feel alone. It's God, I want somebody to see me. I said, I want somebody to listen to me. Do you know how bad people want people to just listen to them? Just listen. Don't judge. Don't run off at the mouth. Don't be trying to fix me. Just listen yes. to me. Uh -huh. listen, listen to what I got to say. That's Don't right. interrupt me and Come say on. your piece and this Come and that. On. Just listen. Come on. I, I'm not even looking for you to fix what I'm going through. Mm. I don't want you to fix what I'm going through. Just Pastor. Okay, I'm gonna listen to you. I'm gonna listen to what you gotta say. But let me say this. You know, I already messed it up. But let me say this, Hannah. You ever wanted somebody to really listen to you? And they just I said I want somebody to listen to me. More importantly, God, I just want to be loved. I just want to be loved. I was a broken vessel demanding love. I was a broken vessel wanting to be loved. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what we learned today, y'all. Come on. The real love doesn't work in broken things. All right. You gotta come clean with God. Mm -hmm. You gotta be real. If you let me tell you something, if you can't be real with God, you can't be real with nobody. That's if you right. can't be real with God. You can't be real yourself. That's true. How 
can you be real to yourself when you ain't even real with God? Mm. That's like find, making a puzzle. You found, you missing one puzzle piece. You go and try to cut you some paper to fit in there. God is that completion. Yes, he yeah. is. But love can't flow through a broken thing. And a God-based problem is it made up of many members with broken things. And he trying to love through that broken thing. Amen. Love and broken things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You gotta understand what you know. People get married and don't know what love is. That's right. I talked to somebody on their name, they said they got married. And they said, uh, I said, What well, do you love her? Well, he was just, I said, No, and then I asked, Do you know what love is? And the person said, No. And they, they'd already got married now. They done got married when they were married. Her. And they said, No. But I had a one up on them. I said, When I got married, I didn't know what love was either. My husband didn't know what love was. But we grew together to learn what love is. See, there's three, and then Minister Ricky was all in my lesson. There's three kinds of love. There's philia. Philia is made for things. That's when you like something. So you're supposed to like things and love people. Uh -huh. You're not supposed to love, oh, I love my car. Girl, I just bought this coat. Woo! I love this coat. Come on now. Come you don't on. know how old they say. I love. Oh, I like it. I like it. I'm cool with it. Philly is for life. Eros is flesh. That's what you see in the pornography. That's those feelings you get, and, and, and it's all flesh. But see, that's another kind of love. It's called agape, and that's that unconditional love. And my husband and I grew to learn how to agape love Amen. each other. See, that kind of love ain't no string attached. Ain't nothing you got to do, ain't nothing you got to perform. It's just love. And I thank God for that. And that's the kind of love that David had with his only best friend. And I thought that was weird. This man was king. He was king of a nation. Uh -huh. I only had one best friend. Yes. And that a trip. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. God, really, in reality, y'all don't know how real that is. God. You see those people that hang in their group, we're friends, they friends. You, you don't have a really one good friend in this world. Now, I ain't talking about God. Maybe if you're blessed, you got two. Oh, Lord, you are highly favored if you got three. Come on now. But ain't no such thing as a bunch of friends. Uh -huh. David was king, and in Samuel 18 and 1, it describes their relationship. It said, And it came to pass that when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the, the, ooh, Lord, come on, brother, read it like And it came to pass that when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, when David was, was speaking about Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as much as his own soul. Jonathan loved him as much as he loved himself. That's right. That's right. And nothing was able to break that love. Even when his father kept trying to kill David, that did not destroy the love that they had for one another. The true agape love that's explained in the Bible isn't focused on oneself or one's feeling or emotion, but is instead an outwardly focused on others, wanting the best, wanting the best to serve and to care for others and not just yourself. We learn this, we can grow. We learn this, we can be better Christians. When you give your life to the Lord, ask God to teach you how to love. And no love grows without a relationship taking place. You got people don't want to read their Bible, don't go to God, don't go to church, don't want to talk about God unless 
somebody die. I got to swear up and down. I know God. Come on now. I'm a Christian. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You judging me. I ain't been to church since what Easter. What makes I and my husband so close is we got a relationship. And it wasn't based on boyfriend and girlfriend. We were friends before we was in a relationship. We were friends close to six years before we had a relationship. You develop a relationship before you start talking about love. You know what I think? You crazy. People jump in a relationship and the next week, I love you, baby. Baby, I just love you. You don't know me. How you gonna love me? You don't know nothing about me. That's okay. I just know what all I know. That's your rose. No. You don't know me. See, the reason Jonathan and David felt so much, they had a relationship. They knew each other back to back, up and down, in and out. The Bible said, love, you want to know who love, what love is? Love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It is not proud. It isn't rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It will always protect. It will always trust. It will always hope. It will always persevere. But my most important, my favorite is love never fails. Amen. If people in Hollywood knew what love was, wouldn't be such a height in divorce in Hollywood. Wouldn't be such a height in divorce in churches. People marry and have no clue as to what it means to love. That's right. You're right. Absolutely. They base it all on the feeling. We just grew apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, baby, when you get fat and you went trying to squeeze in the clothes, they go, They grow apart. Come on now. <laughs> when you're trying to squeeze, you like that outfit so bad and you're forcing yourself in it. You got to get rid of that. Look, me and this, like, me and this outfit, we just grew apart. <laughs> we don't know each other anymore. <laughs> That's what happened. So I had to take it to Goodwill. But you don't put that in a relationship. Marriage takes hard work. Yes, it does. And it ain't always fair. It ain't always. Like, what that, what that singer be saying? Like, 50 50. What's his name? Huh? So it ain't, it ain't always 50 50. Sometimes it's 30 90. Sometimes it's 60. It ain't 